This is episode 2 of my Arduino 101 series. Remember that this is not basic level anymore, so we will learn some more in-depth programming for Arduino. In the previous video we have took a look at the datasheet of the Atmega 328 microcontroller and learned step by step how to configure the registers for the internal comparator and how to use that comparator. Today we will learn something even more important. We will see how to use the port register control and why is that better than just using digital write or read. We will understand which pins correspond to which port, how you can find these names on the datasheet, how to configure the registers and control the inputs and the outputs. With practical examples, we will see why this is a lot better. So make sure that you subscribe and activate the notification bell and consider supporting my work on Patreon. So let's get started. JLC PCB is sponsoring this episode. Feel free to go to their website jlcpcb.com and find all their services such as low-cost PCB manufacture with 24 hours build time, SMT assembly of all your components or the SMT stencil for soldering SMT components. Using their platform is very easy to order PCBs. Just go and upload your Gerber files and select the settings and for only $2 you can order 5 PCBs of any color that you want. Receive them very fast and by the way, even at this low price, the finish quality is amazing. What's up my friends, welcome back. This is the Arduino Uno that I will use for today's examples. This board is using the Atmega 328P PU microcontroller. This IC has 28 pins and it has a DIP package. But we also have basically the same microcontroller in an SMD format and this is the Atmega 328P AU version. This one has an SMD package and 32 pins. As memory and all the other stuff, these ICs are basically the same, but the SMD version has two more ADC pins and one more ground and VCC pin. So let's focus on the PU version for now. Pins are labeled like this, starting from the dot on the first pin, to pin 14, and then to the other side to pin 28. But the connections between these pins and the pins of the Arduino board are not using the same names. I mean, pin 9 from the IC, for example, is not connected to pin D9 from the board. So let's see the real connection. The Atmega 328 has three digital ports, port B, port C and D. Each of these ports is controlled by a register, and since the Arduino Uno is an 8-bit board, each register could control 8 bits, so 8 pins. In this way, digital pins from the Arduino from D0 to D7 are controlled by the port B, and the analog pins A0 to A5 are controlled by the port C. Now we will see in the interruption tutorial in the future that each of these pins has an interruption bit that is marked as PCint as for port change interruption. Then each of these pins could have extra functions such as I2C communication pins, SPI communication, wired communication, PWM output, the reset pin or the crystal oscillator input. So this should be the final port map of the Atmega 328 microcontroller, where we have the port pins with one color and the real Arduino pins of the board with a different color, in order to make you understand better. Ok, now let's see how to control these B, C and D ports. When I make for example this code here, using digital write, I set the digital pin D9 of the Arduino to be high. But internally, what I really do is to place a 1 on the second bit of the port B register. So why is that? Well, because that bit as you remember, represents the digital pin D9 of the Arduino, and by setting this to a 1, it means that it's set to high. But digital write is a function. If we open Arduino libraries, we can see this code for this function. And as you can see, these are a few lines. It detects which port is selected, what value is selected and then it sets the port to that value. So having more lines in the code, it means that we have more delay time. So let's make a test. In an empty Arduino code, I set pin D9 to be output. Then in the void loop, I put the pin to high and with no delay in between, I put it to low and then I also place a delay of 5 milliseconds. 
the void loop will repeat itself over and over. The Arduino Uno works at a speed of 16 MHz. And because there is no delay between the low and the high state of the pin, this code should create a very very short pulse. 1 second divided by 16 MHz is 62 nanoseconds. So I upload this code to the Arduino and connect my oscilloscope to pin D9. So here we have the signal. Each 5 milliseconds we have a very short pulse. I make a zoom in and I measure the width of this pulse. And we can see it is 4 microseconds. But why is this so long? There is no delay between the high and the low state of the pin. So why isn't this in the range of nanoseconds? Well that's because we are using digital write which is a function of the Arduino. And this will take a while to execute. We enter the digital write function. We get the values for the timer, the port and the bit to control. Then we decide if the port is for a pin or not. We change the output value, we stop interruptions for a moment and then we change the pin to high or to low. So all these steps will take some time, so that's why the pulse is longer than expected. Another solution instead of using digital write is to directly control the port register. So let's see how to do that, but first let's see the speed difference. Remember that we had a code where I put D9 to high and then to low with no delay in between. The second code will do exactly the same, but using port register control. So I upload the second code. Once again when I zoom in I can see the pulse which is a lot shorter. Now the pulse is only 64 nanoseconds and that is 60 times faster than before. The difference in time is amazing, so if your code needs a lot of speed, using register control is a lot faster. I now use the port register control for all my projects and the results are way better. Ok, so as you remember Arduino has 3 ports, B, C and D. Today we'll center on the digital read and write, so we won't use analog values. In a normal code, if you want to set a pin to high for example, you first have to define that pin as an output, right? So for that instead we use the data direction register, or DDR. We have the DDRB, DDRC and DDRD for each port. Placing a 0 to the bits of these registers, that means that the pin will be set as input. And with the 1 we set the pin as output. Let's say that you want to set pin D3 as output and the rest of the pins as inputs. For that we do DDRD because pin D3 is on port D and then we equal this to this binary value. As you can see the fourth bit of this byte is equal to 1, so pin D3 will now be an output. If you want for example pin D3 to D7 to be outputs, we equal DDRD to this value. And the same here for PD9 or for the pin A3, but using ports B and C. Ok, so now we know how to set a pin to be input or output. Now let's see how to set it to high or to low. For that we use the P or RT registers. We have once again the port B, the port C and the port D registers. Setting a bit to 1 means that the pin is set to high. And with the bit set to 0 that means that the pin is set to low. Ok, so before we have set pin D3 to be an output, now let's set it to be high. For that we equal port D to this binary value where we put a 1 to the 4th bit of the register, which represents pin D3. As another example, port D equal to this value, that means that the pins 0, 1, 2, 4 and 6 are low, and pins 3, 5 and 7 are high. So you can do the same for any other pin from any other port. But this is not exactly a good way to configure registers. Why? Well because we affect all the bits of that register, even if we want to change only one bit for one pin. In the example before we wanted to set pin D3 to high, so we equal port D to this value. So we set pin D3 to high, but we also set all the other pins to low. So what if you don't want that? Imagine that for example that pins 5 and 7 are already set to high in a different part of the code. And now with this line here you set those pins to low and you don't want that. So how to set only pin D3 without affecting the rest? For that we use boolean operators AND and OR. We use the AND operator to place zeros, and we use the OR operator to place ones. So for example for putting D3 to high, instead of making port D equal to the byte, we do port D OR equal and then the byte. 
the OR operator will work like this. If we multiply 0 with 0, we get a 0. If you multiply a 1 with a 1, you get a 1. And if you multiply a 1 with a 0 or a 0 with a 1, we still get a 1. So that's why we use this operator to put 1s. Because in any case there is a 1, the 1 will always win. Only when both values are 0, the output will be 0. So imagine that port the register already has the pin 5 and 7 set to high, so the bit 6 and the 8 are set to 1. So now we do our register or our byte, where bit 4 is a 1 because we want to set the 3 to high. So one by one we make this operation. 0 or 1 is still a 1. 0 or 0 is still a 0. Again 0 or 1 is still a 1, till we get to the 4th bit, where 1 or 0 is still a 1, and we get this result. So as you can see bit 4 is now a 1, but bit 5 and 7 are still the same, so it didn't affect the rest of the bits. Ok now let's say that you want to set to low a pin, so we have to put a 0. Let's now put the 3 to low without affecting the rest. For that we make an AND operator. In this case 1 AND 1 will give a 1. 1 AND 0, 0 AND 1 and 0 AND 0 will all give the 0 output. Only when both inputs are 1, the output will be 1 as well, so that's why we use this to play zeros. So in this case we do port D equal to our byte, but invert it. So all the bits are 1s, but the 4th bit, which has to be a 0. So once again one by one we make the operation. 1 and 1 is still a 1. 1 and 0 is a 0, 1 and 1 is a 1, and for the 4th bit, 0 and 1 is a 0, so we put a 0 to digital pin D3 without affecting the rest. To invert a byte in Arduino, we can pass from all zeros to all ones and only change the bit that we want to use. If that is confusing, you can just use all zeros, but we add the exclamation symbol at the beginning. With the exclamation signal in Arduino, we invert the values. So this byte with an exclamation will be equal to this byte. So that's how we set the pins to output or input, and that's how to set them to low or high using the register control which is a way better mode. But how can we read the value from a pin using registers instead of digital read? For that we use the PIN register. This will store the input value of each pin for each port. So let's say that for example you define pin D5 to be an input, using this line in the code as we have just learned. Now in the code you want to read pin D5 value. Pin D5 input is represented by the 6th bit of the PIND register. So we have to check that. If you want to check if this pin is high, we have to make an end between the PIND register and this byte, where the only one is on the 6th bit. So when the input is low, the value will be all zeros. When the input D5 is high, this value will be 10000, and in digital that is a 32. So in case that you want only a 0 and a 1 value, you have to shift the register 5 bits to the right for pin D5. 4 bits to the right for pin D4 and so on. Now the read variable will be a 0 for low and a 1 for high, the same as if you were using digital read. If you want to see if the pin is low, just add an exclamation signal before the parentheses to invert everything. So in case that you want to make an if digital read, you should make something like this, and change the bit you put to 1 depending on which pin you want to read. Also change pin B, pin D or pin C depending on which port is that pin from. So guys, that's how you make digital read and write or set the pins to input or output with the register control. Make sure that you watch my previous Arduino 101 video. Read the datasheet of the Atmega 328P that you can find below and more examples on electronoops.com. Make sure that you subscribe and activate the notification bell. And if you consider supporting my work, check my Patreon page. Thanks again and see you later guys. Hey guys, Electronoops here, this is the end of the video. And thank you very much for supporting my channel and watching my videos and maybe even subscribe to this channel. And I would like to give a special thank you to all our patrons for supporting my work, supporting my tutorials. And if you also consider supporting me, just check my Patreon on Patreon slash Electronoops, select any tire that you want. And like that you will be able to see my videos before the YouTube release. You can get in touch with me with comments or uh, questions. You can even receive a t-shirt like this one depending on the tire that you select. And uh, also maybe you have uh, some problems with your project and I'll be able to help you. So like that we can help each other. So yeah, once again, thank you very much for all our supporters on Patreon.com. 
And by the way, I'm also on Facebook, Instagram, uh, Twitter, and, and uh, also our website, electrons.io. So if you make an account, you will be able to post your projects, your tutorials, teach others your work, and also use the forum for, our, for the questions and all the doubts that you have. Thank you once again for supporting this channel, for giving a like to this video, and also by subscribing and uh, supporting me on patreon.com. Keep up, you guys.